Let's look at question 10b. The diagram below shows a cuboid. Okay. Give your answer correct to one decimal place. Part 1. A straight adjustable wire connects R to P along the top of the cuboid. Calculate the length of the wire RP. Alright, RP had copied this thing here. Now we're looking at connecting R to P. So this is the wire RP. Now if you look carefully, you will see that you could draw this triangle PSR like this. Mm. Let me not draw it like that. Um, yeah, like this. So that P is up here, right here. S is at the 90 degree corner here and R is out here. Now notice that from Q to R is 60 centimeters so from P to S is the same 60 so that's 60 centimeters the angle here. This length from W to V is the same as from S to R which is 100 so we can calculate this I want you to try this pause the video and try it and then we come back to it alright so this will be by Pythagoras theorem the square root of 60 squared plus 100 squared Let's just use a calculator here. So 60 squared plus 100 squared will give us 13,600. And the square root of that is 116 point, call it 619, 116.619. But it asks us for the one decimal place, so 116.6. So it is 116.6. So let's see 116.6 as our answer up here. Good. Now, what else did it ask for? It says the connection at P is now adjusted to and moved to T. Calculate the length of the wire RT. So it's R T that we want now. R T. Let's erase the rough work. Okay, R T. So we have the wire moved from R to T. You see that it will get a little longer. Well, let's see what's happening here. Suppose you want to go from R to T. Notice that if you look straight up from, from the top and look at the cuboid from the top, you would see a length the same as the 116.6 that we found before All right so and then what you would have is an extension by 20 centimeters so you have the 116.6 going straight it would be like straight from V to T so if we make our V uh, looking straight from the top we make our V here and our T here it would be 
116.6 right and then slant it oh this is the 116.6 and then we stretch it a little bit by 20 right so what we would have is R coming from RT originally it was up here if we slide it straight down to VT we would have the exact same line but then 20 would go on it right so looking from the side here we would have something like this and one sixteen point six and we would have our right angle right here so what you would have here is a hypotenuse which is a little longer than the one sixteen point six so let's calculate that this would be the square root of 20 squared plus 116.6 squared so we draw for our calculator so 20 squared plus 116.6 squared equal that and then the square root of that 118.3 so we would have 118.3 118.3 centimeters all right let's look at it another way as well let me just write the 118.3 up here before we do anything these are in centimeters always put the units all right let's look at this from another angle all right what we have here hmm, is from R to T we have three measurements Suppose we say this is square. Suppose we say we're finding the square root of, and we have three different right angles here, three axes, an x, y, and a z axis, where we can consider the x going along this way. We have an x-axis, a y-axis, and a z-axis. What we would have is the square root of the x, 100 squared, plus the y, which is 60 squared. You can see it up here. Plus the z, 20, plus 20 squared equals, and then... 100 square plus 60 square plus 20 square 100 squared plus 60 squared plus 20 squared equal and then our square root of that will be 118.3 to something 118.3 also so we have over 118.3 centimeters all right again so we could look at it from two different angles we could look at it using the three axes in three dimensions as this is the case or we could look at it from having our 116.6 slanted and lengthened through a certain angle 
going by 20 centimeters. Good. Now let's see what else we're being asked for. You want the, to calculate the angle T R V. Where is angle T R V? T R V. Okay. So this is the angle T R V. No, let's look at it sideways. Let's look at it from the side and see what that would be. Looking at it from this point of view, we would have a one eighteen point three the slant going down is twenty. All right. Or if we look at it from this way rather rather than this way. Let's scrap this. If we look at it this way, we would have a one eighteen point three slant and from bottom to top it's twenty high and we would have a ninety degree here. So what we would have is this angle at R and adjacent and the hypotenuse. So we would say the cosine of the angle at R. What did they say? What did they call it again? They call it TRV. The cosine of T. Hmm, the cosine of TRV is adjacent 20 over hypotenuse 118.3. <coughs> so hmm, TRV would be the cos inverse of the 20 over 118.3 we suffering from a lack of space here let's let's finish it down here so what is TRV cos inverse of 20 over 118.3 so I have to go into advanced mode to see the cos so what we have is the cos in I have to clear this the cos inverse of 20 over 118.3 close bracket equal 80 point let's call it 80 point 2 this is 2 and decimal place so it is 80.2 degrees good let's see what else they say see what else they say complete the following statement the size of the angle through which the wire moves from RP to RT is the angle move from RP to RT that angle would be up here a smaller angle Remember this was the 80.2. So 90 minus 80.2 would be what? 9.8. So 90 minus 80.2 would be 9.8 degrees the, an angle which is the same as RTV is the same as RTV we could choose other angles it's also QS 
u. That's one. You could also use p r v. All right. Because the thing is r t v would be which angle. RTV is really this angle. Alright? Now, you could, if you want, use the angle PVT. So PVT would work as well. The same as the angle PVT. So PVT is another. All right. So that was question 10. And then question 11 on the vectors and matrices. So we'll do question 11 later on.